Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be checking out some of the new 3D animation features that were just added to the Godot engine. And when I mean just added, I mean just added. These are only in the master branch. So basically, at this point in time, you have to build Godot from source code to be able to see these changes. But of course, they will be in the next version, uh, which I think is 4.05, but I might be missing a version. It might be 4.04, but anyways, uh, chronologically, the next version, early July, should have uh, these animation changes we're about to check out today. And we already looked at some of the stuff they did for the 2D animation. Now we're looking at what's happened in 3D. And they've added new animation tree and state machine controls. And there's this article on going into some detail about what is new. But we're going to cover this in the video. So I will link this down below if you want more information. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Now I'm using the 3D platformer tutorial because it's got a scene in it. Player.scene, which I've opened up over here, uh, which is already animated. All I've done is deleted the existing animation tree player. That's the old system they used to use. Now we're going to use the new system which come up here, create a new node, and what you want to do is an animation tree, like so. And then when you've got it, set it to active, assign an animation player to it, which we already have in the scene, so we're going to assign that guy to it right there. And then tree root, and this is where the new functionality really is. So you see here, we can create a couple of different options. An animation is just an animation, pretty straightforward. Um, blend space 1D and 2D, we'll get back to it in a second, but blend tree is basically the existing setup and state machine is the new setup. So we'll look at those two next. Now this um, blend tree, again, is like the existing animation tree, but been polished a fair degree. Now you can see very much what is currently active, what the details are. So you see here, first off, it's telling me that the animation tree is inactive, which annoys me because I just turned it on. So I think there might be a bit of a bug there. And then second, we're going to head on back over and we need to set up an output. And so this guy is pretty straightforward. You're basically creating uh, nodes of animations that you can blend together. So for example, I could come in here and I can add a single animation like so. And we'll create this guy as the, um, the walk cycle. So this guy's already pre-configured for a bunch of animations. And if I just connect it to the output, that is what we get. So you see here, we are now walking in 3D. Some pretty cool stuff, pretty simple. So now let's look at blending in an animation. We're going to do a one-shot blend. This is the kind of thing you would do if your code was calling for the user to jump, for example. So we're going to go ahead, add another node, and we'll create a one-shot node like this. And this is just another animation. Um, so basically, I need another animation to feed it in. So animation over here, and let's make this one, I don't know, we'll go with the shoot animation. So that is the one-shot. We want to change this guy out so that this pin instead goes to the in on the one shot and then the output from the one shot goes to output. And you'll notice it's doing the exact same thing. And one of the major changes you've got to the way the animation uh, tree works now is you've got this visual indication of the current animation and its progress. And you can also see a blue line which is showing you kind of like the, the channel the animation is running over. So now you see we've got this one shot option. I can come here and basically you'll see that there was one shot of it that went through. If you look down here, you'll see it when I do it again. So boom, one shot and it does the shooting animation that one time. So basically this is how we would probably control mixing or blending in animation using uh, your code options. You see you got another different options over here for filtering how it goes. Speaking of filter, you can also come here and filter down and basically turn on or off which bones the one shot blend in animation will work with. And that's for any blended animation. So you can use filters to like fine detail what actual bones are going to be controlled by this animation. So if we wanted to limit it to just the right arm, we could have done so right there using the filter. And this is essentially the new animation tree. The big thing that you see here now is this visual progress and then watch the blue. See when it's running. So you've got this nice indication of what is ha uh, happening with your current animation. Now the next one, we're going to go back to the animation tree. We'll just clear this guy out and we'll create a new one. This one is a new state machine option. Now state machine doesn't do a lot to look at it, but it's a very logical way to organize things and it's very accessible with code. So what you can basically do is create an animation that goes to another animation that goes to another animation, etc. And then you'll handle them with code. Urgh. It's not active again. Let's turn that back to active once again. And we will go to edit. All right, so here we are in our state machine. You see over here, we got a couple of different options. This is for selection. This is for adding. First thing we want to do is add and you can choose um, animations. Uh, other, you can even actually have other state machines in your state machine. So we're going to do just three animations. So we're going to do an idle cycle. And what idle could put oops, not sure what I just did there. Let's just undo that. So you've got your idle cycle and your idle cycle might potentially go into your um, walk cycle. So, and then 
your walk cycle might go into your run cycle. And this is how you can basically set up a state machine. Now a state machine can also be searched in or connected into all these other blend trees. It is an option. And as you saw here, it's even an option for right here. So you can have a state machine that feeds into another state machine. Um, now we're gonna go over here to connect mode. And then basically you can just draw connections between the state machines like so. So if you've got a transition between each thing, and then switch over here to move guys around, you can use a state machine basically to, to have, you know, first this animation, then that animation, then the next animation. And this one is mostly designed to be hooked up on the back end using code. So this is how you could, you know, have your character transition from the one state to the next state to the next state. And as you saw, you can actually make pretty complex states. We just created a, a very, very simple one in this particular case. And then the final one to show you is the 2D and 3D blend. I'll, I'll only show you the, sorry, the 1D and the 2D uh, blends. And I'm going to gloss over this to a certain degree because quite frankly, I don't, fully get why you would use this. Uh, but uh, it, you know what, if, if you're an animator, I'm not an animator, I just dabble in this stuff. If you're an animator and you can actually tell me the purpose behind this feature, I, I would love to actually know it. So let's come here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a new blend shape 1D. Uh, we are currently set to on in theory. So let's go here and hit edit. And now what you've got is a 1D setup. Actually, no, I want a 2D. So I wanna have it on two axes. Sorry, let's go ahead. And we will go back there and we will create a blend slice 2D and edit air. And now what you're doing basically is you're plotting. So you see you've got your X and your Y axis from zero to I think one, one, one. Uh, so it's basically a normalized X and Y axis. And now what you can do is basically drop things on here. So I can add an animation of say um, run. I can add another one over here of say jump and I can add one over here of say falling and then I can say okay make me a triangle thought that did it automatically all right maybe I gotta connect them manually point point Come on, there we go. Anyway, so there is my triangle of the three different options. Now as you remember, this one that is currently selected is the jump up cycle. This one here is the, oops, I'm still in create mode. Go back to select mode. This one here is the run cycle, and then this one here is the falling cycle. And this here is the point that controls between them. So what we can now do is basically shift that point around. All right, what do I do to move that point? that guy right there. So now I can move that point around within the cycle and it should blend accordingly. Now I don't have, oh God damn it. It got turned off again. I don't know what the deal is for that. There definitely seems to be a bit of a bug there that it keeps turning itself off. So now that it's actually enabled, you see as we switch the point, we blend between those different animations uh, based off where we are on the triangle. And you can keep adding 2D blends uh, to your heart's content. Again, I'm not here. So somewhere around the middle, right around here, we should be a perfect blend between all three things. So if we wanted to run, we go up here more towards the run. And if we wanted to, whatever I set up over here, jump, we go closer to it. And here is falling. So if you wanted to do a bit more running fall, you can blend down that way. And then that way. Again, I'm not entirely certain the purpose of these two blend space nodes, but uh, they're definitely quite cool. And then, of course, behind the scenes, you've also got um, the uh, new coding changes, especially for the state trees for uh, accessing these things so that you can actually hook your code up to it and, you know, transition between those states, uh, do nice blends, etc. So there's some improvements on the back end as well. So definitely the uh, 3D animation functionality in Godot is definitely improving with this stuff. I would be interested to know a use case for this. Um, I believe it says even in the write-up that this is often hidden away. And I kind of understand why, because I don't know why I would ever visually edit this. Uh, but if you've got if you've got a use case, please do let me know in the comments down below. And that's it for now. So also let me know what you think of uh, these changes in general. It's it's amazing how fast Godot is improving, and it's also kind of amazing the 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 amount of functionality that was already in there, and of course that that they're you know doing in a polished brush on in the first place. But uh, there's some pretty amazing tools in here, and you can do just about everything you could dream of in Godot already. And the tools for doing it are getting better and better. But I am interested in knowing what you think of all this. All right, talk to you all later. Goodbye.